It's been about two hours since I left Vershots for Niche, and I just stopped off in a town called Patachin uh, to see this monument behind me. It's the Freedom Fountain Monument from 1975. Here's a World War II monument. The guy holding the machine gun. I'm presuming from all the police cars in the parking lot, this is the police station. I don't know what this is, but it certainly looks Spomanicky. It's like an Asian temple. Look at that artwork at the top. That's Patachin in 20 minutes. Next town, Alexinats. The Alexinats bus station. I'm gonna check out one Spomanik in Alexinats and then it's off to Niche. So let's take a look at the monument to the revolution. Walking through the weeds to a memorial ossuary to Bulgarian fighters in Niche. I've made it to Niche. They put this up in 1963, and behind this mosaic is a tomb that holds the remains of around 2,000 Bulgarian fighters. It's the guy walking the dog, he just walked by and said, they were all fascists. They just switched sides at the last moment, 1944. I guess this will be the last Spomanik for today. I'm in Bubanya Memorial Park. I'm walking to the Three Fists Monument that they put up in 1963. Before I look at the Spomanik on the other side of this 23 meter long marble wall, let's look at these panels here. There are five panels. Tell an obvious story. German guns. People lined up to be executed. Dead bodies. Fists raised in defiance. And this is a poem. And now for this Bomanik. On February 12th, 1942, there was a mass prisoner escape at the local concentration camp called the Red Cross. I might go there tomorrow if it's not raining too hard. The Nazis were not pleased. 105 prisoners escaped, 11 German guards were killed. And as punishment, the Nazis executed around 12,000 citizens of Nish, right here at this site. And these uh, 23 meter tall fists commemorate those executions. This site was one of the most deadly killing fields in all of the Balkans during World War II. The fists are actually three different sizes. It represents the fact that men, women, and children, families together, were all killed here. They're calling this the Glass Chapel. And there's Niche, the birth city of Constantine the Great. I'm walking to uh, one more monument, one more monument, but I just noticed uh, this is a synagogue here. See, you can make out the Star of David in the window. So the founder of Constantinople, now Istanbul, Constantine the Great was born here in Niche in 312. You don't believe me? In 1999, NATO bombings killed a bunch of civilians in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, and this chapel behind me is in memory of those victims. And here's another monument to the victims of NATO. And this is what 25 bucks gets you a niche. 
I got a Christmas tree. View of the city. Mm-hmm. Bed takes up 100% uh, of the bedroom. Ooh, that's exciting. I want you to pay attention to this. This is a very, very special moment. This is Shriovitz, okay, Rakia. I'm with a, I'm with a Russian, and he doesn't have one because he doesn't drink. Yeah, a Russian who doesn't drink. Cheers. He's gonna carry me home tonight, though. Pork stuffed fillet and shish kebab. So is that the only person you killed? Nice is sometimes called the city of Borek. The round Borek was invented here. So uh, I'm gonna start off with that for breakfast. Taking some Russians to see some Spomeniks uh, commemorating the deaths of civilians at the hands by of America. Americans. By Americans. So, um, the Russians feel right at home, don't you? Don't you, Slava? Right at home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's as depressing as home. As <laughs> depressing as home. <laughs> What am I looking at here? In, in 1944, 2nd of June, they they burned eight of, of uh, the planes, planes, occupiers' planes, um, with 10,000 liters of gasoline. <laughs> and after that, maybe they burned an air. Airport, well, not aerodrome. How do you call it? If any of that was lost on you, because I know the Russian accent sometimes is thick and hard to understand, but 10,000 liters of benzene <laughs> to burn a bunch of planes and maybe an airport. That's what that commemorates. <laughs> they put it up in 1985. Now, a brief detour out of Leskovats to Vinarte. You're, you're missing that guy on a bicycle. He's I, so fucking I believe me, I know men on bicycles in Serbia. <laughs> believe me. Uh, we don't need to see any more of that. This is Vinarte. They put up this Bomanik in 1977 to honor the fallen fighters of not just World War II, but also World War I. So what are we looking at here, Arsene? Yeah, I didn't get everything, but it's about that humanity will get love and beautifulness in, and peace in future. I guess in future everything will be settled. And it's not only for World War I and World War II, it's also for Yugoslavian war. Three wars. <laughs> and maybe some, you know, Ottoman uh, wars. Yeah. There's definitely room for more wars on here. <laughs> yeah. I think the J stands for Yugoslavia. I don't care what the Russians think. And those are probably shared. Yeah, we, we, we stopped here real quick in uh, Leskovac to see this apartment complex that is surrounded by wood. I guess there's fireplaces in an apartment building. I never never saw that before. Yeah. Reading the obituaries? Yeah. Like, it's a tradition here. Now we're heading out to see the Monument to the Revolution. They put it up in 1971. It's 12 meters tall, and it commemorates the uh, many thousands of local victims who perished here during the National Liberation War, World War II. Uh, funny story behind this one. In 1944, the partisans pretty much pushed out all of the Germans. The city was freed. And the Americans were conducting a mission called Operation Rat, or Operation Rat Week, where they intended to bomb all of the fleeing Germans. Now, the Americans thought that the Germans were still in the city of Leskovac, and so they leveled the city. September 6th, 1944, the Americans accidentally killed 4,000, over 4,000 Leskovac civilians, and uh, 
knock down about 2,000 buildings <laughs> to apologize the Americans put up a, a basketball hoop. No, uh, so uh, having done the Germans' work for them, uh, you know, the Germans returned to the city, naturally. A month later, the uh, Red Army showed up with their new allies, the Bulgarians, who were fascists uh, right up until that point, and they liberated the city for the final time from the Germans. So, yep. This is a monument, uh, some broken Jewish gravestones. Maybe they put it together using uh, material from a desecrated Jewish cemetery. I'll look it up later. Ready for some uh, world record hamburger? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you say it? Do you know how to say it? Leskovačka, Leskovačka, Pleskavica. No, Leskovačka, Pleskavica. It's a burger that this town, Leskovac, is famous for. Uh, they have the unofficial world record for the biggest burger in the world, 66 kilograms. Uh, Guinness doesn't recognize it because they weren't there to weigh it. It's a beautiful day. All right, dog, dreams do come true. Hey, hey, uh, hey Slava, what are you holding? Uh, some uh, home wine. Homemade <laughs> Romanian wine. Uh, uh, are you party? ready to get fucked up? Elevator party. <laughs> Try some uh, homemade uh, tsoika. And uh, what do you say in Russian for cheers? <laughs> so Russians, sure. don't say, Russians don't say Nazdorovia. They don't say Nazdorovia. They say like, let's drink for your health. And after the third, third sneeze, they're saying something. Yeah, it looks... It looks just like you. <laughs> there you are. There's your drinks. <laughs> and this is my third and last day in Niche. We'll start it off with some Russians. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Maybe, maybe this is an homage to Constantine the Great, the first Christian emperor of Rome. And this is Iskra Sloboda, the spark of freedom. It commemorates a partisan bombing of some German soldiers at the nearby Hotel Park. Put it up in 1985. So Spomeniks are really, uh, it's part of your blood, right? You see them and you understand them immediately. Yes, yes, it's a giant anvil on a giant plow and that symbolizes, you know, everything. Sacrifice. Sacrifice, most of all. Something about servants of Serbia. A mosque once stood here. <laughs> Arseni, I have a surprise for you. Last time I was here, it wasn't here. And now it is. It's a monument to your people. Brand new Spomenik to the Red Army. You gotta tell me what it says. Uh -huh. So on 7th of November of 1944, Russian Soviet army uh, liberated Serbian people, fought against the fascist, liberated Niche. And like all what we received is the bell, this bell, this beautiful bell. And you have a list of names of people who died here, like Georgian people, Russian people, Armenian people. Do you Ukrainian feel, look, look, Russia has been ignoring uh, Serbian atrocities for years. Do you feel disrespected by uh, the effort, the, the lack of effort they apparently put into this Spomenik? Yeah, you know, actually, <laughs> it's it's better than nothing. Like, because better than nothing? Yeah, yeah no, no, now whole Europe doesn't remember anything. Like, like usually they just remove them, those monuments. Mm -hmm. And yes, mm. Serbs, at least they like a bell, but I would prefer a giant anvil, plow, something like that 
they did. Perhaps uh, you would prefer that they at least slide. stick to the Cyrillic alphabet. They can <laughs> yeah. at least stick to Cyrillic. Yeah, and yeah. here it's in Cyrillic. So thank, respect. Thank God, respect. Yes. Some respect yeah. we receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the, uh, the Red Cross concentration camp. This is where the prisoners escaped from, 105 prisoners. Uh, and the retaliation was 12,000 civilians killed by the Nazis. So this camp was established by the German Gestapo in the mid-1941. It held around 35,000 people. Wache means guard in German. You can see it's written up there next to the Nazi signs. Prisoners writing on the walls here. So I think this is the bedroom. People could sleep on the straw here. I will read maybe it's Looking at bullet holes there. So it was May 1809, the first Serbian uprising took place here in Niš. The Serbs lost against the Ottoman Empire, and the Turks then built a 15-foot-high tower of 942 Serbian skulls. Skull Tower. Yeah, so the tower is actually inside this chapel. The Serbs built a chapel around the uh, skulls. All right, this restaurant is known for its baby sheep. And this is a sheep burger. You excited, Slava? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can say that winter is here. I'm in Popina Memorial Park, heading up the hill to the mausoleum to the fallen insurgents in 1981. The biggest of these three monoliths here is 20 meters tall. It memorializes this location as the spot where the very first confrontation between the partisans and the occupying German Wehrmacht forces took place, the Battle of Popina. It was over a thousand German troops versus around 300 partisans. The partisans lost. The locals here call this Spomenik the sniper for obvious reasons. Although I read that the creator of this Spomenik does not approve of that nickname. Horrified, in fact. It's an interesting echo hanging out here in the triangle. Can you hear that? Riba, ribi, griza, rape. Riba, ribi, griza, rape. This is not a planned stop. I think I'm in Balo Save, and uh, I don't know what what this is for behind me. There's no plaque. There's nothing, nothing going on here. Well, there was a plaque here, but now we just got little pieces of letters left. I just rented a hotel in Kragujevac for 11 bucks a night, for two nights. Wish me luck. I'm in Kragujevac on my way to the luxury hotel, and I just popped out of the car when I saw this uh, funny monument. I think, it's a, I think it's a blood drop, maybe a, a monument to blood donation. You want to see what $11 gets you in Kragujevac? Thank you. 
the Shumaritsa Memorial Park in Kragujevac. It's a park that's situated on the sites of around 33 mass graves. I've seen estimates from around 3,000 to 7,000 Serbs rounded up and killed on this patch of land. And there are lots of Spomeniks. Behind me is the October 21st Museum, built 1976. Uh, there are 33 brick columns of varying heights representing the 33 mass graves in the area. I'm not going to go inside, I've been here before, but inside are portraits and uh, the final words of the thousands of victims executed by the Germans as punishment for the actions of the local anti-fascist partisan fighters in the area. Coming up to the very first sculpture built here at Chumaritza Memorial Park, it's called Pain and Defiance. They put it up in 1959. As you can see, it depicts a uh, a man and a woman writhing in pain, perhaps defiant. It's dedicated to the hundreds of uh, executed victims here at this particular location. This is the monument to executed students and professors. They put it up in 1963. And it's dedicated to the hundreds of children murdered here by the Germans October 21st, 1941, as well as the murdered professors. This Spomenik is also known as Interrupted Flight. So the story goes, Wilhelm Keitel, the German Wehrmacht Field Marshal, issued a directive in 1941 that for every one German soldier slain, up to 100 reprisal executions of civilians should be carried out. Now in this region, 40 kilometers west of here, a group of partisans launched an attack on a group of German soldiers. Wehrmacht commander of Serbia, Franz Bome, immediately ordered the arrest of thousands of male civilians. So the Germans rounded up and executed roughly 2,300 civilians, including around 300 young schoolboys. And this Spomenik is for the kids and their professors. The Germans then conducted a military parade celebrating the executions through the Kragujevac town center. And aside, after the war, Bome, the Wehrmacht commander of Serbia, was captured while fleeing to Norway. And he was put on trial at Nuremberg for this massacre at Kragujevac. But before the trial concluded, he killed himself by jumping out the fourth story window of his prison, Das Ende. This one's called Against Evil by a Mexican sculptor, Miguel Romo. They put it up in 1991. This is the freshly painted Crystal Flower, 1968. It depicts a stylized blossoming flower split in two. It's dedicated to a young 15-year-old Roma boy who was shot along with a group of adults uh, who are all buried here in a mass grave. This is 100 for One by Nandor Glid. You know that name by now. He put it up in 1980. The name 100 for One obviously alludes to the order that Franz Bome carried out, where 100 civilians were executed for every one killed German soldier. This is the Stone Sleeper. It's dedicated to all of the people executed here who were from outlying towns and villages around Kragujevac. Monument from Croatian people, Circles, 1981. It's a memorial marker for several of the mass graves that exist around this hillside here. A circle can often be used as a symbol of perfection. These circles are all warped. Something less than perfect took place here. Not doing so bad on time. Got about a half an hour left before sundown and only two more Spomeniks to go. This Spomenik stands as a marker for a set of mass graves from the 1941 massacre. It's called Monument to the Resistance and Freedom. They put it up in 1966. Monument of Friendship. The end. Time for a drink. Look 
at this traffic circle. Um, you know, during the 1999 Kosovo war, the Zastava Serbian automobile plant was bombed by NATO and nearly destroyed completely. And in 2008, NATO Italy's Fiat purchased the ruins for pennies on the dollar and invested over a billion euros in 2010 to restore the buildings, install state-of-the-art production machinery, and of course erect a giant Fiat emblem at one of Kragliovac's popular uh, traffic circles. Goodbye, Kragliovac. Just uh, passed this while uh, driving. Bumbarevo Berdo is the town I'm in, or near it anyway. And uh, here's an overgrown Spomanik. It looks like this Spomanik is uh, set up for a picnic. And tables and benches. Looks like there was uh, some water at play here. All right, let's see how well my days of Serbian lessons pay off. Um, at the top it says, in memory of our loved ones and the years 1941 to 1945, uh, never to be forgotten. You're reading the truth. It was war, fall of 1944. There were German slaughterers. There were 42 days of battle. There were wells filled with children. This was the greatest disgrace of humankind. They put this up in the 1980s. This is a monument to the fallen fighters of Moishinye for World War I and World War II. Along the way to Užice from Kragujevac is a pretty important Spomenik stop in Chachuk, the mausoleum of struggle and victory, completed in 1980. It took four years to build. 12 meters tall, it was designed by the same guy that built the sniper in Bopina, Bodan Bodanovic. The Spomenik commemorates the 4,600 partisan fighters who died in the National Liberation War, World War II, and the liberation of Chachuk. So in April 1941, the Germans had control of the city. And five months later, the partisans allied with the uh, Serbian nationalist uh, Chetniks drove the Germans out. So this became one of the first regions liberated in all of Europe during World War II. Unfortunately, uh, the Chetniks soon joined forces with the Germans with the overall goal of defeating the Partisans. Um, the reason for that was that the Chetniks didn't like that the Germans were killing Serbian civilians every time, you know, they were attacked. And so in the name of uh, Serbian civilians, the Chetniks joined forces with the Germans. Anyway, uh, the Germans came back to the city to control. Just noticed a memorial mosaic dedicated to the partisans on the side of the road here on the way to Ujice. All right, next stop, final destination, Ujice for two nights. Um, the Serbs have a poem about this city, and I'm not that great at reciting poetry, but I'll give it a shot, if you'll bear with me. Nema pičke bez užičke. Um, it's uh, a poem about the, the, the fair uh, women of this city. Um, it's a compliment, I believe, in a way only uh, a Serb can compliment. I'm not going to translate it for you, it's a little crude, but basically the women are, are good looking there. Um, Užice is Serbia's Izmir, my fellow Turks will get that reference. So uh, nothing but trouble, married men should stay away. 
Um, also, the ratio, I believe, is a little skewed thanks to uh, militias uh, of the past. Something like three girls for every one boy in certain areas of uh, Ujitsu. It's hard for you to sing in this video. I'm in Ujitsu, and this is the tallest Tito statue in former Yugoslavia. This bronze spomenic behind me is dedicated to the victims of the 1941 vault explosion. Uh, so yeah, the partisans were manufacturing their own munitions in bank vaults during World War II. And when the Germans bombed the site, a massive explosion of ignited munitions swept through the vaults, killing 120 partisans. Um, there were a number of civilians using the vaults for shelter during the bombings as well. So they're included in the 120 count. That mosaic was by Rade Vergovic, uh, an artist born here in Užice in 1939. He has a number of mosaics throughout the city, not all of them located in a convenient location. That one was in an office building. I had to get permission to sneak in there and take a picture. Come on, Vergovic. Make it a little less awkward. That was in AIK Bank. Um, you can see the Tito statue in that mosaic. Um, the mosaic depicts Ujitsa's Partizan Square. You can see gears. It's a city of industry. Look at little doves flying above the city, doves of peace. See some Yugoslav artwork up there. This is the Partisan mosaic of 1941. Not the mosaic I was looking for, I just found that one by mistake. This is Hotels Latibor, 1981, created by a famous Montenegrin female architect, Svetlana Radovic. Right, there's another mosaic of Rada Vergovic inside this post office here. And appropriately enough, it's on the postage stamp. All right, done with Yugoslavia creations for today. Gonna check into the house, head back out, find some food, find some drink. I'm headed to the top of Zlatibor mountain, about a 25 minute drive from uh, Užice. Hopefully to find some world famous Serbian nakipnjaks. It's a two kilometer round trip walk to this Spomenik I want to see here on top of Zlatibor. And then I'll get back to my hunt for nakipnjaks. It was late November 1941 in the deep mountain snow here on Zlatibor that Tito was retreating from his short-lived Supreme Headquarters at the recently declared Republic of Užice. Yeah, the Germans were back and Tito had with him a lot of wounded soldiers. To Tito's dismay, there weren't enough partisan soldiers to carry all the wounded. And so Tito reluctantly decided to leave the wounded behind. He knew that uh, per international rules of war, when the Germans found them shortly, his wounded would be taken as prisoners of war and their wounds would be treated. Um, the Germans did find these wounded partisans and of course immediately executed all of them. So this Spomenik is for those executed partisans. 
They put it up in 1967. So there were over 100 wounded partisans that were executed by the Germans. Another complete weapon, yeah. It was a good complete weapon, yeah, but I think the one down, uh, for sure, the one down in uh, Ujitsa is better than the one up here in Slavia. I'm now the proud owner of not one, but two Nakatnyaks. So it gets cold up here, and the wives of the Serbian mountain men knit Nakatnyaks for their husbands to wear in the winter. This is not a joke, this is tradition. And uh, they look like this. I'm not sure yet how to wear it. Maybe you put it on your head. Anyway, uh, I'm ready for the Serbian winter. Here's the other one I bought. It comes with a bottle of Shliva. Uh, Grandma Mara, Baba Mara, uh, knit these. She didn't want me to film her, but I caught her just in time before she closed for the day. So now heading back to Ujice. I was reading some douchebag travel blogger's opinion that this is the most beautiful square in all of Serbia. Obviously, she'd never been to Belgrade or Novi Sad, Subotica, hell, Vershots, anywhere really. I had big plans for today. There's my uh, FJ down there. Yeah, so I was going to go to Kadinecha and uh, Valjevo today. Some pretty cool Spomeniks, important Spomeniks, good stories behind them. But the road conditions are not going to allow that. I'm driving straight to Novi Sad instead. Lucky for you, I was here in the summertime, took a few pictures. So I will tell you the stories and uh, put up some summertime photos. So the first Spomenik I was going to visit is the Kadinjica Memorial Complex, which they built in uh, 1952 and expanded it in 1979. Um, it's dedicated to uh, the Workers' Battalion. These were the guys who, on November 29th, uh, 1941, um, 400 of them versus 3,000 Germans, uh, they basically all died. They were fighting to just uh, hold them off a little bit so that Tito and uh, his partisans could escape Ujice, and it worked. They held them off for six hours, and that was enough time. Um, but yeah, it was a suicide mission. The second Spomenik I was gonna go to today is in Valjevo. It's the monument to Stepan Filipovich from 1960. It was May 22nd, 1942, just before the Nazis uh, hung this 26-year-old Yugoslav Croat communist that he raised both fists in defiance and shouted, death to fascism, freedom to the people. And at this moment, a photo was snapped. And this photo became widely known throughout the land. It became a symbol of resistance against fascism during World War II. And aside, uh, Stepan's brother, Shimun, was shot by the Germans in the Kragievac massacre. Now, Shimun was an ethnic Croat, so this could have saved his life, but he didn't tell the Germans this. He chose instead to share his fate with his fellow citizens of Kragievac. It's the Novi Sad Sunday Night Christmas Market Club.
bucks a night gets you an old Yugoslav studio flat in the center of Novi Sad with private on-site parking in the courtyard. And of course, it's a walk up on the fourth floor. This is the Museum of the Revolution from 1969. Um, now the Museum of Modern Art, but they still have some old exhibits here. I love these yellow tiles. Yellow brick road. Maybe not quite yet ready for prime time. Uh, here he used the, the weapon that was used by ordinary people that went to the partisan uh, unit. And this was Nandor huh? You can see that there's a lot of cheap, uh, cheap guns and uh, even some uh, weapons uh, from peasants. Uh, you know, like, uh, and there's the five-pointed star made out of guns the peasants used. Originally positioned in the there, there is a symbol of corn grumel, how could I call it? Uh, sunflower? Sunflower, yes. I can rise of fascism in 30s. Rise of fascism. A broken swastika. Not just out of, but uh, in some different types of monuments. This one was... So they didn't have electricity, so it was pretty dark, but uh, you get the idea. This one behind me, the uh, guard was telling me, was something used for uh, cannon practice, it's not a sculpture. You can't see the stained glass window from inside. It's uh, plastered up. The Museum of Modern Art went for the white box concept. The museum was closed, but uh, they were nice enough to let me in anyway while the workers were installing the lights. Man on a horse. Bishop's Palace. This is the most beautiful H&M I've ever seen. My fellow Montronians, look what I just bought. Serbian wine called San Trifoni. February 14th is the holiday here for St. Trifoni. Name of my grandfather. So I'm gonna say this is the best uh, craft beer bar in Novi Sad, you agree? <laughs> I totally agree. The best. It's the best.